The title of my talk is Introduction to Engineering Using Google Docs and Interactive Video in Support of an Online Flip Classroom Approach. I want to emphasize online because we are still learning about the online flip classroom. However, the university itself has over 20,000 students, but we currently do not have any online engineering courses. We are currently developing online graduate courses and we're a small engineering group and what you see here is the full-time faculty. We have about 534 students in the engineering field. We offer degrees in electrical engineering, computer engineering, and systems engineering. Most of the students are adult learners with 40 percent are with the military. So the students we have are non-traditional students. They work all day and they have family. They come to campus after work taking classes from 5 to 11. We do offer classes during the day but most of them come to class at night. Each class is about two to three hours long and are 11 weeks in length. So that is the environment that we are working on. However, we use an active learning approach. And like the previous speaker, we do not want to talk for two to three hours and we do have a lot of active learning exercise. We, the College of Engineering, are given strategic direction to start developing online engineering courses. So here's a road map and I'll start off with a description of the EE 110 course then I'll briefly describe a list of weekly lab experiments. It's a pretty tense course. Each week the students need to complete a lab experiment. Then I'll describe how we intend to transition or translate our face-to-face -face instruction to online delivery. Then I'll provide a summary of results and implementation of how we transition to online. I'll describe the results in terms of a grade distribution. Then I'll highlight key comments of student feedback on the teaching approach. And then I'll end with some conclusions about the future. So here's a course description of EE 110. And here's what I want to highlight are just three basic ideas that we provide the students in the course. The first one is introduction to electronic components, namely logic gates, resistors, capacitors, uh, voltage source, etc. The second part of the course uh, in which they put these components together is recognizing uh, circuit configurations such as knowing the difference between a series connection and parallel connection. And then finally we teach them how to use laboratory instruments such as an oscilloscope, voltmeter, ohmmeter, ammeter, and then at the end of the course they talk about uh, how to use a function generator which I'll describe next. So here's our weekly list of uh, lab assignments for this course. We'll start off with ones and zeros involving uh, digital circuits. Then we transition to analog circuits, learning about Ohm's law. And then the last couple of weeks here, they uh, learn how to solder, assemble, and test a function generator. As I mentioned earlier, uh, our students are adult or non-traditional students. They work all day and have family and they come to class to 5 to 11. What we basically did was that we took the face-to-face -face classroom and tailored it or leveraged technology so we can translate how we teach in the face-to-face -face, uh, traditional teaching to one that is suitable for online classroom by leveraging technology. In our face-to-face -face teaching, our classes are two to three hours long, and we use an active learning approach. Basically, I, in my case, for analytical type courses, I start off with a, a short 5 to 15 minute lecture and then show them how to solve a problem. After I complete solving a problem, then I have the students struggle with another problem, usually taking between 15 to 20 minutes. And then after the 15 minutes, then we solve the problem together. And all that series or process takes about an hour. Again, what we want to do is how should we leverage 
e-learning technologies that are currently out there that would come close to an active learning and face-to-face -face teaching approach. In this case, we use the flipped classroom environment to accomplish this translation from face-to-face -to, -face to the online classroom. So this flipped classroom must be done correctly. It serves as a transition point going from the traditional face-to-face -face classroom to the online flipped classroom. Since none of the faculty, the full-time faculty, has experience in developing online courses, we all developed the course for EE 110 in developing videos, setting up assessment questions, and developing the lab suitable for the online environment. Before presenting the survey results, here's a brief summary of what we did and how we did it in translating the way we teach face-to-face -face for online delivery. First, we emulated the face-to-face -face teaching by leveraging available e-learning technologies for online teaching. In the top middle block, we created the content from scratch, developing interactive and multimedia content, weekly assessments, and hands-on activities conducted every week. Shown at the bottom left block is the resources used for lab experiments. The MyDAC hardware is shown on the left. The MyDAC is hooked up to a laptop containing a number of software instruments to conduct many hands-on hardware experiments. The survey results will show students enjoyed and remembered the hands-on activities such as soldering. The latest results are consistent with past surveys. Also, the student feedback tells us that the multimedia content prepared the students to complete the weekly hands-on lab experiments and weekly final assessments. Another major piece of the multimedia content is where all the full-time faculty created videos using Camtasia. The videos uh, consist about nine hours of length divided into 70 small short videos. The students also have an inexpensive textbook to reference and supplement our videos and other text-based content. We also created a YouTube channel entitled STEM Videos for the Flip Classroom, which serves as a repository for our videos. We realize that simply watching videos is basically passive activity, and we wanted to go beyond the interaction of play, pause, rewind, and stop by the e-learner. Just like the face-to-face -face classroom, we wanted to create a conversation with e-learners and have them interact with the video content. To make this connection, we developed knowledge check activities which were added within the video. You see here we evolved from a PowerPoint in which we had embedded videos on a PowerPoint slide followed with assessment questions. And then we delivered uh, the requirements to the university level folks to as a Word document. However, we wanted to keep the amount of clicks by the user to a minimum. So we developed Google Docs, which is basically evolved from the PowerPoint approach. And then the fall 2016 quarter, we used interactive video. In interactive video, we basically embed questions posted on top of the YouTube videos. The beauty of this technique is that we do not have to redo the videos to ask questions. What we did is we add a layer of assessment questions on top of the video. Again, this is without redoing the nine hours of, of 70 plus videos. So preliminary results show that the College of Engineering developed an effective approach to teach technical topics online for EE 110 or Introduction to Engineering. Let me show you some results. So here's a summary of a grade distribution from the winter 2016 quarter to the fall 2016 quarter. First of all, you see on the left column our grades from A, B, C, D, and F, our number of students receiving these grades. We do have A minuses, B plus, C minus, etc., but I lumped it in terms of these grade categories. Next you'll see here are the grade percentages without F's and with F's. Here we have the instructor 
we have just quick note that we have one instructor that taught the ground course in fall 2016 and the three flipped classrooms. One of our authors, uh, Professor Quo, uh, provided this instruction. Here's our delivery mode, our face-to-face -face or ground instruction, and our flipped classroom. And again, just to note that one instructor taught this, uh, the flipped classroom approach for the 2016. And here are our quarters that we've taught the flipped classroom. And I also added the ground instruction in which our adjuncts taught the EE 110 course during 2015 while we developed the content during that same year. We note that there's an increased number of F's and one explanation is that I'll dig deeper on the next slide but the flipped classroom place, places more responsibility on the students to view the videos do the reading assignments, do the weekly assessments before completing uh, the lab experiments. If they don't do that, then they will have a hard time completing the weekly lab assignment. You can see here that the when you don't have the F grades in our final year, the fall 2016, grade averages appear consistent or comes close to the ground instruction. Digging deeper into the F grades, obviously when they don't attend class, less than 50 percent then their percentage grade suffers however those students who still come to class who still received low grades and that's a result because a large number of assignments received the grade of zero points since they didn't turn them in any assignments that they did turn in here are with lab partners so based on these results we're gonna require the students that verify with us that they did view the videos did the weekly quizzes before starting on the weekly labs. So here is one example of a interactive video which we produce 70 short videos. The idea here is to simulate a conversation as in a face-to-face -face classroom. The screenshot displays a video content. In this case we are have a demonstration of measuring current using a FET simulation from the University of Colorado of Boulder. This screenshot displays a video content before a student clicks on these knowledge check questions. And again, these knowledge check questions are embedded on top of the video. Also, at the bottom, shown here, of the video player are when the knowledge checks or tips appear at these times. So after a student clicks on one of these knowledge check questions, but this slide shows you an example of that. Graphic here is very small, so you can press the icon here, this plus icon, so you can expand the drawing. Uh, the student must take action before the video proceeds. And after answering the question, the learner gets immediate feedback. After getting some feedback, the video continues. Each time the e-learner plays the videos, the answer shown here is randomized in terms of the order. For example, the 1.33 amp shown here may appear at the bottom the next time the video is played. So the key point here is that the student must interact with the video and then they get immediate feedback. Now for some student feedback on the teaching approach. In EE 110, due to the small class size of 5 during the last quarter, I wanted to get some more feedback so I asked my students from my advanced circuit analysis class to watch the interactive videos as well for extra credit. One student in my class was graduating after the quarter. One student uh, already took E110 and I asked him to see what his reaction is to the interactive video. And another student, students were juniors where one student wanted to watch the video since he hasn't taken E110. So in total we have nine students watching the videos and five EE110 uh, students actually taking the course. So here the first question, the teaching methods in this course effect are effective. Here we have nine responses as I mentioned earlier. We had six strongly agree and three agree. The evaluations through the video really help reinforce the concepts covered in the lecture. And they like the way the lectures cover just one or two points. And this has to do with cognitive load theory which I'll not describe but it helps the working memory of the student to digest the information presented in the videos and in the class. The teaching methods were as effective as they could be without a face-to-face -face, and they enjoy the quiz style of instruction as well.
The second question, interactive video with embedded knowledge checks enhance engagement for the student when viewing the video. Here, eight students strongly agree and one student agree. Uh, the comment shown here says that more video lectures should be set up like this. I find that when I watch a long video, uh, it is easy for my mind to wander or get distracted. I find that the knowledge check questions help keep my mind from wandering and help me focus on the topic. This is interesting because a Harvard study did focus on this aspect of mind wandering and they found that 40% of the students have their mind wander even though the videos are short. Just so, just having a short video is not enough to engage the students. You need to have frequent testing. And so this idea of knowledge checks embedded on top of the video helps the students keep engaged while watching a short video. This one is uh, quizzes in Google Forms format enhance engagement for the students when viewing the video. You can see here we have a strong response. Six strongly agree two agree and one disagree and I can explain that later but this is Google Docs form in which uh, we have a short video followed with short assessment questions that they answer this is used because it helps uh, administratively uh, records the results of the quizzes and then we can export the results in an Excel format whereas in the previous case interactive video it has that capability but because of time constraints I did not have time to learn how to record the quiz questions but we can use the both the Google Docs and the Google Forms as a way to add an element of surprise or anticipation to keep the students engaged so the, in this case the Google Forms the quiz formats were excellent and easy to understand and in this where case uh, the second comment I found that knowing that there was just going to be a quiz want, makes me want to understood the topic at hand I also thought that to see the material then be given a question about it made sure that it was understanding the material and the main points and that I understood the types of examples to display my knowledge I also like the answers for questions that I missed so I can go back to the video and look to, at the book to find out how to get the correct answer this gave me more confidence so basically we wanted the students rather than pushing always information to have them pull information to get a good understanding of the material the last question here the interactive video and assessment approach Google Form provided an effective approach to teaching in their engineering topics for either the traditional face-to-face -face teaching or online teaching and this also had a strong response of five strongly agree and four degree and this received the most comments and so with the Google Docs approach in this question the students can take this frequently up to three times but the answers are not randomized and so that's why I think the feeling here is that the students disagree that they thought that the interactive video was stronger than the Google Forms because uh, the student felt that the exam can be taken without understanding the material. Nevertheless, that's part of the comment. So as you can see here, although the Google Form for Learn can be effective, sometimes it is possible for students to pass without learning the material. Because of this, I believe that interactive video learning style is more effective. But in any case, uh, most of the comments here are positive, showing that the interactive and assessment approach to Google Forms are both effective in terms of delivering engineering content either for the face-to-face -face or the online teaching approach. So real quickly here's some general course comments. What did I expect in this course and was pleasantly surprised to learn and receive? Basically they like the soldering and assembly of the equipment. What did I expect in this course and provided new direction? They had a decent grasp of electronics and engineering. They learned binary. They learned Boolean algebra. And they have a good understanding after the class of what electricity and electronics is all about. What did I find in the course that was most challenging? Again, soldering, the lab, analysis part, the Boolean al algebra, and simplifying the circuit. And a little bit of Yumi here in the last comment. Then finally, what did I find that I used that I can improve in the next course? Soldering, how to calculate and measure current. They thought the interactive videos were very good. Uh, Boolean algebra operations and that they, you need to stay on top of the work and watch the videos. 
from the last comp. So the conclusions is that we're ready to teach fully online. We told that to the university. They have like a nice adaptive, what they call intelligent tutoring system, which records all the learning activities and actions of the students. So you can identify which students are having trouble. So it has like an analytic engine to record all the recordings of how the student is doing for each course. It takes knowledge of the, what they know before, and they, they won't have to go through the learning modules through all the nodes, and it just basically customized the learning activity for each student. We identified the early issues, a collaboration among students. I've talked with the people at Arizona State on Wednesday, and they showed me or introduced me some collaboration tools. And, and how to handle the troubleshootings. We don't have the infrastructure of TA, so we have to still word it, but we identified those issues early on. But we, we're excited to get this started to verify our perceptions of when we deliver it online. And then this helped the whole faculty, the full-time faculty, because we're ready to develop future uh, courses as well. I hope not to that.